Welcome Bulldog fans and football fans of all stripes. We don't discriminate here. We're equal opportunity offenders in all regards, but especially this week we have a battle of Bulldogs coming up, Steve. Mississippi State versus Louisiana Tech in Ruston, 630 CBS Sports Network. Uh, you and I both plan to be there, of course. Today we got to hear from uh, Coach Dan Mullen a day late because of the Labor Day holiday, but it gave him time to evaluate the Charleston Southern game, and I thought one of the interesting takeaways he said was because it's going to be such a different ball game this week now, such a different, especially offense, there's there's not a whole lot they can take away from that first game and apply to this one. So did it sound to you, Steve, like maybe this is kind of a second start to the season? It sure felt that way, and you're right, David. Last week was really almost kind of a dress rehearsal of sorts, and all due respect to Charleston Southern. As we mentioned in the videos prior to that ball game, Mississippi State should be able to out-athlete Charleston Southern. It's a little different scenario this week. Louisiana Tech, of course, a team that has uh, consistently been near the top of their conference, of Conference USA, and so Bulldogs are going on the road, and the last time the Bulldogs went to Ruston, they came home with loss, and uh, the homestanding Bulldogs were a little less than hospitable. Yes, we were there. Uh, I certainly remember how that 2008 game developed. It was the beginning of the end of the Sylvester Croom era. And we'll always wonder, had Derek Pegues been eligible that game, would those two dropped kicks have changed things? And what would have happened? Would Dan Mullen even be here now if State had won that game? So always one of the great what-ifs of college football. But in the long run, you have to say things have worked out well for Bulldog football. Dan Mullen now in ninth season, 62 victories. Two of those wins have been against Louisiana Tech, that great overtime thriller in 2011 when uh, Tyler Russell drops back and hits no Chris Ralph drops back and hits was it Ladarius Perkins or Jamie I even our start running I think it's Ladarius now for the uh, overtime touchdown state wins two years ago 45 20 I think Tech scored twice quickly more a tougher game than it looked like but it was a good solid win for those Bulldogs in their big 2015 season now here's Tech again probably a little disappointing it went into their season last year but a very good offense a well-respected coaching staff a lot of carryover from last season what do you know at this point about the other Bulldogs well, they struggled a little bit last week with Northwestern State. Ultimately, they won the game, I believe, 52-24, so there was never really any trepidation. But Northwestern State was able to move the football right. some, and I, and I think that's what we'll see with State this weekend. I think State will be able to move the football. The game will be won or lost on Mississippi State's ability to play defense, and that, that's not a big surprise to people. But based on what we saw and the confidence learned from the Bulldogs last week, you've got to feel like a road trip at this time of year mm -hmm. is a good test for them to see if they can lock in. Uh, I'm excited to see how this team matches up. I really believe, David, when we had that Tech game a couple years ago, they jump up 14 nothing, if you recall, and there was a lot of groans in the stands. And then, of course, once State got the lead, they kind of ran away from Tech. I'd like to say I expect a similar ball game, but it's a whole different scenario when you go on the road. And I think Tech will come out ready to play. State's going to have to answer the bell early. Especially because you've got a team now with 12 seniors, and, and a lot of those are on special teams, so you can't really say they're the regulars in the offense and defensive side. But you've got enough juniors who've been through the grind. They've won some big road games, and they've lost some big road games. They know how dangerous these trips can be in settings like this. Certainly, you know, we who were at the Brigham Young game last year know that's a game that got away. So you know there's, there's a lot less margin for error whoever you're playing in the road. But here's a Tech team that so badly wants to beat an SEC team, obviously. Their emotion is riding high. So Mullen, you saw how much he stressed today that you know while the coaches look at execution and things like that, he was looking for effort. He saw effort on the field in the home. I think he expects that effort to carry over now that you go on the road the first time. David, and that's the thing, no matter who your opponent is, you want to come out and have a good attitude and effort. Mississippi State's defense certainly showed that. Probably more energy from that group we saw in week one than at any point last year. Uh, that's exciting because I believe that is reflective of Todd Grantham. I believe that is the attitude that he has brought to this defense. I expect that to carry over. And I think they'll sell this week as another challenge. You know, It's like, you know what, nobody respected you. They never really moved it into the polls. It's one of the situations where you went out and had a big impressive ball game, but you didn't really uh, you know, get any national attention or really get a lot of press for it. So. Now is another step in the process, another step up in competition before the Bulldogs get ready for a home date with LSU. Well, you have to like how Dan Mullen and Steph handled last week because we media and fans all kept talking about, remember last year, remember last year. The coaches never talked about that. The players did. They brought it up themselves. But I think it was a great way that he kept the right kind of tensions on his team without putting a guilt trip or a scare into them. I think they'll know how to handle this trip as well with Mullen. He's, he's been through this grind so many times. So much of the staff has been together for so long. And even the new guys are just old dog coaches like a Grantham, like a Brian Baker, uh, like a Ron English and them. Just they know how to handle this stuff. All right, turning to some specifics we had just now from a Dan Mullen press conference. Um, he did update that the state came out of the game healthy, which we saw. You know, nobody was carted off or carried off Saturday. So in good shape. Uh, 
They, there is a possibility that Malik Deer could be back, but more likely it's going to be at least another week, possibly two, before he's in the mix there. Braxton Hoyett, who was held out as it turns out, everybody asked in postgame, where was he? And Mullen told us that the trainers said they held him out a week, but as a precaution. And other than that, it looks like this team should be ready to go. And David, when you play an option style team with all the cut blocking and the physicality that comes with that offense, you expect us to, you know, to rack up some casualties, but it looks like the Bulldogs emerged from the game uh, victorious and healthy. And as Dan Mowen said too, there were a lot of players that played less than 20 snaps and he didn't think many guys went over 30 snaps. So you should have a fresh roster and guys pretty much free from injury as you get ready to hit the road this week. I'm glad you mentioned that because it clarified. Some people were asking yesterday about how could a couple of guys be players of the week because they didn't have huge numbers like a Fletcher Adams. Yes, he was in on two safeties, but was, is that worthy with two tackles player of the week? He said he only had 13 snaps. Right. When you get that kind of plays in 13 snaps, it shows you're really being efficient and taking advantage of your opportunities on defense, as Fletcher did, you know, as, as Gabe Miles did in his return and receiving opportunities, you know, as Jesse Jackson did in his one big catch there. And, and that's a success story, too, because you like to see guys like Gabe Jackson and Gabe Miles and Jesse Jackson, who haven't had big recent years, now show what they're doing. So you see some guys really getting their chances this year to show what we thought they could do all along, whether it was health, whether it was rotations, whether it was depth. You're seeing why never give up on a guy when, until he gets to his senior year. That's true, David, and they've been team first guys. And that's a guy like Jesse Jackson's a great story. A four star out of high school. It took him a year or two to kind of acclimate to the college game. And our hope is this year, especially at a position of need for the Bulldogs this fall, he's a guy that can step up. And, and Coach Gonzalez has mentioned him a couple times as a guy that went through camp and has had his best fall here at Mississippi State. He gets a, his first catch of the season this past weekend. Does a great job blocking on the perimeter, and so, yeah, you'd like to see him. And, of course, getting Gabe Miles going is, a, is probably one of the keys in this offense, not just because of the fact you're replacing Fred Ross, but Gabe Miles is an explosive football player, and he's a guy Bulldog fans want to cheer for, especially after last year. Gabe had a frustrating year, so it's good to see him having fun again, and the Bulldogs will certainly benefit from having number five out there making plays. Steve has posted the video from Dan Mullen's press conference, so you can watch that to get more details about the Louisiana Tech they expect to see. A couple of players, his, his pleasure with the defense, how the, they're going from one utterly different scheme to another. We'll, we'll be talking to Todd Grantham tonight and other defensive guys of how nothing almost will transition from game one to game two schematically. So that's why they focus on everything. Things like that that Coach Mullen addressed. One thing we talked about briefly after all the recorders were turned off, uh, maybe we got a little more clarity about the situation regarding Chauncey Rivers, Steve. Yeah, it does. It, it appears that it's just it's really – it's an unfortunate situation where somebody just simply made a mistake and then Chauncey Rivers is the one that's going to pay for it. Uh, just, you know, some, some classing things that uh, just with the transcript that just weren't taken care of. And it's something they've worked to repair but uh, couldn't get the waiver, couldn't get the exception. Uh, I think in the long run, Chauncey Rivers will be better for it next year because he'll have the benefit of, of this weight program and learning the defense and getting to know his coaches. But also, too, Mississippi State has some numbers there. He would be playing a lot for right. Mississippi State, and the head man said that today. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. Now you move forward. It's, it's not anything that happened at Mississippi State. I know a lot of people are eager to blame State first. This is not a Mississippi State issue, and State's the one that's kind of picking up a tab. And also he has to be a little delicate how he handles that because State will continue to recruit the junior college he came from, so you don't want to burn any bridges there. At the same time, you want to be honest about how these things happen because Rivers, as you say, is pay, paying the price for an administrative error. And again, his situation was complicated. High school, University of Georgia, junior college, now Mississippi State. So it wasn't an easy way academically. It shows why we have to keep reminding people that the difference between college eligibility and college football eligibility are not the same thing. So keep that in mind as well. Also, you'll want to listen to what Coach Mullen said about Kylan Hill in two separate phases of the interview there about how this was a guy who so physically was ready for college football. Now the only way he's going to get better mentally, unlike many a player, is to actually play a game tells me that he's going to get a lot more snaps this season goes on so check out that video after watching ours of course you know give give us a little attention there as i said we'll be talking to coach todd grantham tonight several defensive players have more material up and uh, steve will be heading out of town i'll probably be going at least halfway there on friday i don't know what your travel plans are but you're also very busy now i understand you've cost the what four thousand one hundred book sales mark yeah, we're right there. It's doing exceptionally well, and uh, we've got another book signing this Saturday on the way to Louisiana Tech. I'll do a book signing in Brandon at uh, Bay Window Books there. Brandon, big bulldog country. Expect to see a lot of bulldogs there. So much like the, all those sources who said Leo Lewis wouldn't play, all those same sources said this book wouldn't sell, I guess they're 0 for 2 now. 
Well, they're over about a hundred. Uh, yeah, they mentioned that I would make tens of dollars doing this, and it's never really been about the money, but it sure is nice. So for Steve Robertson, Gene Swindoll, Mike Nemeth, and the crew at jeanspagedogsbite.com, this is David Murray.